Happy Purpose Friday. Welcome, everyone. What a great way to spend our happy hour on a Friday. Our Purpose Friday today is a very, very special day. You guys were coming in to bring people to you that have so much wisdom and have so much goodness. And I'm so excited to start off today introducing our guest today with us. David Meltzer. You guys, I was able to meet with him in person in Irvine. And you know how when you meet someone and just know right away that's someone you want to be connected with. David had that heart. He's got the beautiful business mind. So to tell you a little bit about David, he's the CEO of Sports One Marketing. He's a national bestseller author of Connected to Goodness. Write that down, you guys. You know, we always start out, pen, paper, get ready. You need to read his book, Connected to Goodness. Prior to this, he was CEO of Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. Mr. Meltzer, along with Lee and Warren Moon, negotiated over $2 billion dollars in sports and entertainment contracts. And then in 2014, he received an Ellis Island Medal of Honor from the National Ethnic Coalition of Organizations and was knighted by the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. So we're going to spend today with him. I was able to join one of his calls in a mastermind setting the guidance, the mentoring he gave out was phenomenal. He gave me homework, guys. And I'm definitely moving forward with some incredible things just with his bits of guidance, mentoring, and wisdom. So you guys, take today. Remember, we always have fun. And when I first met David, I thought, yeah, we are very connected. Because, you know, our motto, if we say, if it's not fun, we're not doing it. And David, one of the first things he said was, it's got to be fun. We have fun doing it. Hello. <laughs> so, David, hi, David. Hi. Hey thank, hey, thank you for taking the time to join us today. How are you? I'm fantastic. I really appreciate you including me. Thank you so much. Oh, David, thank you for joining us. And where are you today? I am in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Do we rate or what that he would take <laughs> some of his happy hour and spin with us? That's amazing, David. <laughs> of course. I love it. Well, Debbie, before we begin, I, w I want to announce and congratulate you on your new book, Connected to Goodness. When we oh, went there, you. you guys, David signed it for us, and we took it home. I just finished reading it, and it's amazing, David. So would you tell our group a little bit about it and kind of your inspiration by, behind authoring it? Sure, sure. So um, I was really blessed young, you know, millionaire in my 20s, and also a millionaire in my 30s, and uh, in my 30s retired, which was a big mistake, and I, I lost my gratitude and my empathy, empathy being forgiveness of myself, and I self-entitled myself. And so I, um, you know, went on, surrounded myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. And as I was on the decline, my wife uh, asked me to go back and codify how I had lived my life with so many blessings. And she had said that, you know, I had changed and I, I really was on the wrong track. And so I went back and I, created these principles, three imagination principles, three action principles on how to re-manifest and attract to myself all the things that I was able to get before in my life. And uh, as I did so, uh, everything came to me even greater, bigger, faster, and better. And I decided through the coming out the other end and being so happy that pragmatically I could write a book that describes exactly how to get everything you want out of life, both professionally and personally. And, uh, that journey was set a, about uh, nine years ago, and uh, everything now is just unbelievable. I mean, 
keep coming faster and better. And, and this is me being on this call is, is living proof of it. So thank you. Oh, well, David, I think uh, now I wanted you to talk a little bit about your book because I think today is such a special day for us, you guys, and the anniversary of S September 11th. And David's for us to be together on this National Day of Prayer and Service. It's a very special day for the Power of Purpose and the folks on here. And David, to ha have you join us with what you just talked about, I think we've all learned that connected to goodness is really what brings us financial freedom, emotional freedom, social significance, David and really bringing solutions to this world. And that's what I really felt when I met you, David. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, I, you have the Twin Towers that, that went up, and, and I have the, the four towers in, in my life. And, and uh, for me, those Twin Towers of Israel that went down with gratitude and empathy, the two other towers are accountability and effective communication. And I think today is a great day that represents both gratitude and empathy as well as our accountability and our ability to effectively communicate so that we all can connect to goodness or source or God or Jesus, we met food al Muhammad, Joseph Smith. It doesn't matter that we all can be one and the significance of our country uniting and the world uniting against, you know, negative energy or evil is the significance of today that, you know, uh, those twin towers may have fallen, but other things that have rose up uh, for all of us uh, in the representation of today and the re-inspiration and, you know, the, the new year that occurs uh, by remembering why and how these things happen and making the positive side of it what we remember, uh, not necessarily the evil that caused it. Okay. Amen. So you guys take today and let's embrace the goodness and the positiveness that those of us are putting forth. And David, many, many on this call are truly living the power of purpose. They are leading nonprofit corporations. They're working with youth. They're empowering veterans. They're building affordable housing. They're developing healing centers. Really changing the paradigms of so many of our systems that have been broken and bringing business solutions to them. So I know your latest endeavor as a CEO of a Sports One Marketing, you're setting a new bar and you're trailblazing a new path in the sports industry. What are some of the key factors that helped you turn your vision you had now into a very successful reality? You know, the, the key factors are uh, the perspective of, of, of time, believe it or not, and that, you know, when I shifted the paradigm of, of taking value, doing business to take value from others or receive value, and instead shifting the paradigm to how much value can me personally and my business professionally, how much value can I offer and allow and trust the universe that everyone else will fill up to the level of value that I produce. Instead of, you know, overselling, back-end selling, trying to figure out how to get as much as possible from the consumers, from my partners, from my associates, my whole focus became how can I give more, how can I create more value that creates more abundance for everyone. And shifting that paradigm really created what I call compassionate capitalism and understanding value-based capitalism uh, where the solutions that we find and the value that we give are directly related to the whole or the one so that it's not just a self-centered uh, individual uh, business in, in a capitalistic society. It's looking at the whole and creating a capitalistic value for everyone, and that includes the earth with its resources, all those that are uh, disabled and challenged, our veterans. In, anyone and everyone deserves to have more value, more happiness, and be able to be motivated and inspired to connect to goodness to, to have exactly what they want rapidly and accurately. Because there is enough of everything for everyone. We just have to do the work. That's so great. David, when we when we met um, face to face in your office, 
you know, you, you talked about some of your nonprofit endeavors and um, showed a lot of emotion by meeting some of the folks that you had impacted their lives. And, you know, at the Power of Purpose, we always teach that it's not a bake sale charity. It's a very powerful corporation that impacts this world. So what inspired you to embrace the charitable component with nonprofits with your company now? So my, my original mentor was Lee Steinberg, uh, the famous sports agent. I was the CEO of the most notable sports agency in the world. They had done the movie Jerry Maguire about our family and uh, me being a, a Berkeley guy, both undergrad and law school. He, he uh, trained both Warren Moon and I, my business partner, the importance of community and the importance of oneness and giving back. And through that, uh, he had a very utopic view, a very ethereal, uh, you know, woo-woo type of vision. And because I came from a pragmatic business background, I started to build out action principles to match his imagination principles. So to not only dream about a better society and, and peace on earth and sustainable technology, but actually to execute on them with business plans and get corporations involved and business leaders involved and create this compassionate capitalism that will shift the paradigm of all business in the world so that all business decisions are made for the betterment of all while we're still making money. And in fact, our tagline of our business, which I'm very proud of, and it seems very simple, but it took years, years of evolutionary thinking to come up with the most simple, pragmatic way to tell people what we should be after as business people and individuals here. And number one, we should all make a lot of money, create abundance. Two, help a lot of people, have charitable causes and giving and everything that you do. And three, have a lot of fun. So make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. This mission statement encompasses, encompasses the entire holistic view of how we should live our lives. And if we live our lives that way, believe it or not, we actually get out of our own way, get into the flow of the universe, and are able to manifest everything we desire rapidly and accurately. I love it. Well, Dave, you kind of mentioned it a little bit before, but when I met you in person and then in reading your book, a big key to your success now is you are so purpose-driven. You, you have such a sense of service and giving back, and you find ways to add value to businesses and the lives of those around you, other people. So can you talk a little more in depth about that and, and the purpose-driven part and how you're giving back to businesses? A absolutely. And first, I take a step back and let you know the general premise of where that purpose comes from is a simple philosophy that, number one, we consciously think about what we want. That's our purpose. And when we consciously think about our purpose, it becomes a possibility. And then what we have to do is we have to imagine that in a certain way, knowing our values, our foundation, our personal values, experiential values, giving values, receiving values. We have to create purposeful guideposts, clarity, balance, and focus, which gives us confidence. And then finally, we have to understand the purpose of perspective of what I call the AAA strategy of alignment, action, and adjustment. And, and, and when we, and even not guys in our free will, to do not overcome obstacles or void, but actually to connect to goodness, to have a purpose that is inspired, because if we do, then we will receive no resistance. And that inspiration now makes the possibility of a conscious purpose into a probability of a conscious purpose. And then what I do with this purposeful vision and, and inspiration is I utilize discipline, strategy, and awareness. Those three things in a very pragmatic sense at this world level, everyday living in this capitalistic society. And I use those three things to make my uh, probability my perspective or my reality. So I've created a system, a very pragmatic system that takes a purpose and takes it from possibility to probability to reality. And it's a very systematic, easy thing to do. And uh, as long as we stick to these principles, we, we can have that purpose. And purpose life is a happy life. Uh, you know, Teddy Roosevelt, if you look at strenuous life, uh, his book, life doesn't have to have so many obstacles and voids or, or suffering, but the purpose 
that side of what he teaches is what creates fulfillment and happiness. And so I am driven and focused on purpose, uh, and that purpose is to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. I love it. I was telling him at the beginning, right away we were connected when you talked about it's got to be fun because we always say if it's not fun, we're not doing it. So it's yeah. that. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, David, I know the business, you do so much to give back. And then um, talking about being purpose-driven, tell the folks today on the personal level, what does it mean giving back to you and the sense of philanthropy? What does that mean for you? You know, it, it's part of a whole. So, you know, it, it, to, to give back is to take – what you have and give it away and we can only know what we have we don't even know what we have I excuse me until we've given it away and so this shift in my own perspective and my own paradigm in my life knowing that I don't know the value of anything that I've received until I've given it away and at that basic level it just inspires me and keeps me focused on the purpose of what I am achieving here and and you know what what I look at is this utopic view of the universe, this high vibration that doesn't exist here, and how do I pragmatically re-enter this world with this vibration and make a difference, make a change, and take what I've learned, take what I've received, both uh, materially and uh, ethereally, uh, idealized, and bring it back to everyone and give it back so that I can receive, by giving it away, I can receive the full value, the full fulfillment, and the purpose of what I've achieved or attracted to myself. So at the basic level, that's exactly why I give back. And it's almost math or physics to me more than anything else. Uh, I just understand the physics of the universe and the math of it. And therefore, I have to give back in order to be completely fulfilled and purposeful. That's awesome. Well, you know, David, something that really, um, all of you guys, something that really shown was the bright light, David, when when you were talking about that, what it brought to you personally and talking about meeting a woman who had been impacted by the Warren Moon Foundation. And so I started thinking about, okay, you have to establish and run uh, your friend and partner Warren Moon's Foundation. It helps provide scholarships. Tell us a little bit more and everyone else about how you first met Warren Moon, and what's it like when in his foundation and the story you shared with us? Uh, absolutely. So Warren, Warren and I met, uh, I, I ran Lee Steinberg, and he was a client, and then later a partner uh, of Lee and mine at, at Warren Moon. And then uh, when Lee semi-retired, Warren asked me to create a business plan uh, that basically the general gist of it was to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. Uh, the instructions from him as that close relationship and friendship was, Dave, we're so blessed. How, how can we share that with everyone? And, and I need someone that can take this holistic approach and not only build a business but tie in my charity that gives uh, at-risk kids scholarships to college, not based on their education, but based on only one criteria, well, really two. One, they have to do, have a desire to go to school after high school. And then two, with that desire, we look and see how they've given back to the community. So our feeling is if you take an at-risk child who that doesn't have all the entitlements and, and all the, the luxuries of most kids, but yet they're so enlightened still to give back to the community, Warren and I are willing to invest in those kids because we think those are, the, those are our future. Those are the decision makers. That's where we want to invest. And uh, the greatest example of that, uh, Warren's been doing this for 26, going on 27 years um, and at his foundation. I was in New York City speaking, and this lovely 30-something woman came up to me and asked me if I was Warren Moon's partner. And I said, yes, I am. And she said, I just want to tell you that Warren gave me a scholarship to college. I'd gone to Georgetown, uh, and I just sold my technology business. Because I never could have gone to college without Warren. And she was in tears, and uh, I get choked up because she looked at me and said, please tell him I just sold my business, and I've now retired in my 30s, and I've created my own foundation to give scholarships to kids uh, to go to college. And uh, if that's not the epitome,
epitome of why we give back and the changes. I mean, I'm thinking about all the lives that not only Warren has changed, but I've been blessed to be a part of, and now the legacy and the thrivation that's been thriving of giving back and empowering others to give back. And my personal mission is very simple. It is to empower others, to empower others to be happy. And that truly will change the world. And it will happen in a collective way if we can keep on empowering others, but not only empowering them, but teaching them how to empower others as well. And exponentially, we are going to change the world in the collective belief that everything is good and that we do connect to goodness and giving is great. And, and I believe that that can happen as, as short as we live in our lifetime. Well, David, that is, that's a powerful one, you guys. I, I've lived that, too. I, I've been in Washington, D.C. the last few days, um, David, with the, some of our mentoring students to walk in the halls of Congress. And, you know, in my journey in life, your mission statement personally is what we were about, empowering others to empower others, not being seen as a welfare community or victims or being able to be in control of our own life and destiny and empower others so that we live the American dream. And, you know, it was very emotional for me as I walked into the Cannon Building and was very observant because it's the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And as I saw the handicapped accessible sign in the entrance and the ramp and I, I told Ron and Jared, our students, I said, look, 25 years ago, we had to stand on the street, not the curb, not the sidewalk, because there were no curb cuts. We had to stand on the street with all of my colleagues in wheelchairs and wait for them to come and meet with us and look at how we changed the world. And I was always saying that there were folks in wheelchairs going by and a part of the American society now. So I'm hearing some feedback. So, um, I, that's, so not, that's someone else. Yeah, I, I heard that too. Um, so, Dave, I was thinking really great guidance for our, all of our group today. Many of our mentoring students are on the call, and we have students building beautiful healing centers in Hawaii. We have center, students building veterans housing in Iowa. We have students in um, Phoenix that are working with young kids transitioning out of foster care to give them the tools to be future leaders in our country. And so as I know you've raised millions of dollars for charitable causes, social enterprises, on the call the other night, you told me about some of the committees you're on, raising millions of dollars. So what qualities do you look for when you come across a nonprofit social enterprise to help them raise funds? What is it about them that grabs your attention and really gets your support? You know, it's, uh, it's purpose and persistence. So, you know, the, the purpose itself has to be very clear. And uh, you are the, uh, the example that everyone should look up to of what's possible in, in, in changing society. And what you've been able to do is absolutely incredible. But the, it didn't happen just because of the purpose that you had. It, it was this unbelievable persistence. And uh, that persistence is um, absolutely the, the, the key that I look for. So a lot of people have, you know, great ideas. I always say there's a, a million great ideas out there. But taking it to market uh, and getting it done uh, takes a lot of pragmatic action. And so when I do my due diligence to help out a charity, either sit on their board of advisors or directors or help them raise money and sell sponsorships and tickets, I look for those two things, the correct purpose, uh, but more importantly, the persistence of, of their action. So it's, you know, it's just not an idea. This is someone that's given their life like you to that purpose. And if they do that, I'm willing to join that energy, join that cause, and help them become more efficient and statistically successful in actually manifesting their, their purpose. 
Wow, powerful guidance, you guys. Write that down. Purpose and persistence. Because David, I don't hear that talked about a lot. And that's probably one of the, our keys to success was persistence, was meeting with city council, was meeting with Congress. It was taking it to the streets. It was whatever we needed to do, standing firm in our belief and, and our purpose, and to be the soldiers in the army of compassion for those who didn't have voices. So persistence, guys. And as we met with USDA and the Department of Treasury and HUD, persistence is so key. For those of you that have emerging nonprofit corporations, you're not one of the big dogs that walks in. The persistence, the belief, and the purpose, you have to have those together. That was incredible insight, David. Thanks. Oh, no, thank you. You set the example. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all about purpose, you know? Yeah. Okay, so here's one for you then. Talk about um, me setting the example, and it was because I was given a purpose at an early age, you know, having, having a brain injury, laying in a coma where I was trapped in a body that couldn't respond, and learning the power of my mind, and learning how to be still and build that relation spiritually. You know, we get so busy in life and we take on so many things. Sometimes it's just listening to that inner voice and, and, and having the faith and the belief that you can do it. So I want to ask you, what are you striving for to leave your lasting legacy? And what, what do you want to see happen in your lifetime, when it comes to making an impact, how do you want to be remembered? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a big one. <laughs> I, yeah, but it's simple for me. I, I I I truly want to empower others, empower others to be happy. And and my legacy in this journey is done is that hopefully there'll be millions of people that are able to, to get what they want out of life that makes them happy. And because if people are happy, there is no sickness. There's no death, disease, or destruction. Happiness is, is vibrates the fastest. It's love. It's truth. And I, I have a formula and, and, and an inspiration to give that all that I can, both inspirationally, monetarily, everything that I can to make people happy. And not just give them, but empower them and to know the, the, the difference. And so if I have millions of teachers of the ideas and the principles that, that I understand and I execute on every day of my life, if more people meditate and dream in the right way and there's more inspired people and they take the appropriate action with strategy, discipline, and awareness, and they do and create value for others selflessly and they're decent people and they live at a higher self, if that is my legacy, then I, I have out, out kick my coverage, and that's what, what I strive for. Oh, that's awesome. And I think what you're doing now, David, is just already that legacy of, of teaching businesses the principles that you put forth, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it's every everyone and everything, right, businesses. Because remember, businesses are just a collective belief. It's a collective belief of a bunch of individuals. And if we can teach our leaders and teach our managers and directors and associates, if we can teach these people to empower other people to be happy and create value, we all are going to see some unbelievable things in, in the next years to come. Um, amen. Amen. The, the, the empowerment, the fulfillment, and I and I talked to our students and those on the call with us today. The fulfillment you receive when you are making an impact, when you see people taking control of their life and destiny, you see people getting opportunities that they haven't had. There's nothing that provides that fulfillment like. It does, and when we would watch people that were in nursing homes that had been laying there for three years and 
and we came in and started mentoring them and started working with the systems to change policies that weren't working and then being able to drive them to their home for the first time and then have an attendant that they wanted to be there with them that they hired and be unable to then start seeing that they could control their destiny. It was amazing. There was nothing that like that. Last night I went to a meeting in D.C. And our past Medicaid director from New Mexico, one of them was there at the meeting. We hadn't seen each other for about 10 years. And we were able in the very beginning to get 200 people out of nursing homes with one little program we started that grew into a statewide. And we just sat there and hugged each other with tears and emotions, knowing that a system was changed, transformed, really to empower people, and it brought such economic wealth to our state. We were the first state in the nation that had a positive Medicaid budget. So just to reinforce that we're not looking at big cell charities. David, when he talks about pur purpose and persistence, putting all of that together to show this country and this world how we can do things in a better, more efficient way that empowers people and creates that happiness where we all can live the dream and be happy together. So, David, I just can't wait to be spending more time together. David and I are going to be doing the keynote together. It's interesting, David, how our lives have started intertwining together when I found out I was doing the presentation, and there you were on the, the picture and doing the keynote, too. So but that's just the way the universe and, and God and whoever your, your spiritual partner is, when you're on the right path, the doors open. And that's the abundance you're creating. And that's what you in your book, Connected to Goodness. When you're on that pathway, it's an abundant life. Absolutely. There are no accidents. And, yeah. and I will tell you, related to what you're saying, is I used to think if I could just if I could just change one life, my, my life would, would, would make a difference. And, you know, I, I, I just don't believe that anymore. I, I believe that if, if you can change one life, you can change millions of lives. And we're, we're, we're setting the bar far too low just to change one life. And you're someone that has said it, is an example of this. And, you know, what? It's a good start. Changing one life is a good start. But learn to change many and, and teach those many to change many. And let's all make a difference. Let's all have a pur purpose. Let's be persistent about it. And when we do that, everyone, this abundance will be clear. And, and likes do attract likes. And so as you create abundance, abundance is attracted to you. And everything that you desire will come to you. I promise you, if I've experienced it, I, I am accountable for it. And I take control of my own life with all of my own disabilities that I have that may, may not be apparent to other people. But I work through them every single day as everyone else does. You know, some people are fortunate, believe it or not, and I always say that, that their, their disabilities are, are exterior that are apparent to others. And so many of us, self-included, you know, our disabilities are hidden. It's much harder to, to deal with. But when we do, we all can be better, live at higher selves and attract what we want and help others to attract what they want as well. So, I just, I'm just so excited to be in your life, to be in your circle, and anything I can do, please let me know. So thank you so much. Oh, same here, David. And so if someone wants to get in touch with you, um, how how could they do about go about doing that? The, the easiest way is uh, MeltzerMission.com. Uh, okay. You can go there and, and all the different things that we're working on. Uh, we also at the Meltzer on Twitter at Dave Meltzer on Instagram, D-A-V-E Meltzer, and the L-T-V-E-R. But Meltzer Mission has all, all of the different places from sports and marketing to all the different things we're working on, how to get a hold of me. Uh, and I really appreciate you uh, allowing me this time to, to help other people and hopefully inspire them in any way and manner I could. So thank you again. Oh, well, amazing, David. And thank you for taking the time today with us. All of us here at The Power of Purpose and uh, all of us listening are nonprofit students. 
We're so grateful. David, really, the gratitude is so deep. So we're going to talk about how to get more involved with you in a, in a few short minutes. So I just want to say thank you, and we'll be seeing each other next week. Absolutely. I look forward to it. And if you need anything in the interim, please let me know. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Same here. Thanks, David. Bye-bye. Bye. Amazing. Well, like David said, there are no coincidences. And being able to be connected with him, um, it's been an interesting kind of a intertwine of a, events and things coming together. You guys, when he talks about abundance, I think the most important thing every time I'm with him, I there's something very dynamic and that sticks out. Today, it was persistence. As you're on this journey, persistence is key. As I was in Washington, D.C. this whole week, and one of our congressional leaders was the secretary of the Agency on Aging. She was the secretary of Department of Health in New Mexico. I worked hand in hand with her. And it wasn't always an easy journey. When she had one mindset from the bureaucratical and policy and, and we as advocates came in wanting to change that and redo all that, there's, it's, there's, there's not always a warm reception in the beginning but the persistence, and she saw our purpose. She saw our persistence, and she figured out, Michelle will tell you, that we just weren't going to go away, so she better figure out a way to deal with this, right? So 20 years where we went together hand in hand, walked out of that room after kind of button heads and, and trying to understand each other, we walked out unified. We knew we had a purpose, and we knew we had solutions. And she joined us, and she led. And now she's a congresswoman. And so to go to Washington, D.C., and walk into the Cannon Building and be so warmly greeted, just hugs and, and how can I help and how can I help the mentoring students you have with this, and okay, I'm on the ag committee. Okay, so here's what we could do here, and I just flowing. It was because of persistence. So many of you are just starting on this journey. So when you go into your local city manager and you find out there aren't any CDBG funds or they're already allocated to someone else, don't walk out. Find out how you can be connected. How? What about the next one? How can I get involved with the folks that you funded? How can we be a part of it? Persistence. So David brought some great nuggets as I've been connecting with him. The board that he's on, where the, the conscious capitalism, beautiful, raising millions and millions. He gave you the inside or secret. What did they look for? The deep purpose and persistence. So, Derek, I don't know if you're with this, um, but I would like to see if um, anyone is interested in connecting with David. Yes, absolutely. Let's take a quick poll. Um, that was truly amazing, by the way. That was just so awesome to have uh, David Meltzer join us. That was great. <clears throat> Let's do a quick poll, whether we're just by chat or by raising your hand icon there on your control panel. If you're interested in uh, uh, just connecting with David on, on a more personal level, Write a quick uh, message saying yes, 
in the chat or raise your hand on the icon of your control panel. And you guys, while you're doing that, I'm going to share with you my mastermind uh, group with him. Just a few nuggets he gave me and then the homework assignment. I guarantee you, and I'm going to, I'm going to put it on the screen and I'll show you. I guarantee you I'm going to come away with millions of dollars for our students for the incredible projects they're doing around the country. I'm going to be connected. I'm going to meet with the folks that have the funding. And our mentoring students have the passion. They, they now are learning the persistence. So we're right in line. So I highly recommend being a part of David, whether it's in his masterminds, go to his, the website he gave us and look at the many different things he, he has as tools, as resources, his book, you guys start it, get his book. Um, great way to start start on that journey, but yeah, Derek, I from and the ho and he gave me homework. Can you believe it? I'm the one that always gets to give you guys homework, and now David gave me homework. Ah, <laughs> uh, the teachers become the student. <laughs> awesome. Just mentioned a few things and said, okay, this, 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 and this, and I know it's going to lead to a beautiful relationship together with funders that are going to bring you so much goodness to this world with what you guys are doing. Uh, yes, and that's overwhelming response, by the way, in the chats and the hands up. So thank you guys for that. Uh, that website, again, is www.thepowerofpurpose.com slash mission meetings. That I highly recommend them. Thepowerpurpose.com slash mission meetings. Great way for us to connect um, with David Meltzer and his group. Uh, and you guys, I can, I can tell you, Derek, he is committed. They do calls at 6 in the morning, as you can guess. I sure wasn't on that one. They have Sunday evening. I mean, they really, he's really bringing the abundance. Can you imagine? running businesses with the taglines that him and Warren Moon have, how abundant our world would be, how empowered lives would be, how happy people would be. I, I'm, I'm, I'm highly recommending that you be part of it because the power of purpose is definitely I'm joining in with it. So Derek, I can't. I'm so wrapped up. Derek, Derek knows I've been calling and talking for like two hours at a time, a hundred miles an hour. But being in Washington D.C., walking through the halls of Congress, meeting with our congressional delegations, meeting with leaders within U.S. aid, with um, U.S.D.A. I'm telling you, the opportunities are limitless for all of us. They're so welcoming. They're so embracing. There's, they were so, when we went to USAID, and this is with our nonprofit group, that they're, they're just, I can't say enough about them, beautiful, um, full of purpose, persistent, everything you talked about, houses with hope. They built over 800 homes in Africa, in Kenya. And the Kenyan leader was here, spent time with Derek, he's in the parliament, him and his wife, so such beautiful people. They're rebuilding the villages for their people. You know, the 2008, um, the devastation that went on, 650,000 people that were killed and homes destroyed, and then taking the lead and rebuilding their villages and, and sitting there meeting with USAID and having the embassy um, legal counsel from Kenya sitting with us and going to the meetings with us. 
That's very powerful. And to be able to start talking about phase two of the projects, now that the folks have houses, now the food security, people don't have food. And talking about supplying goats for the orphans so that they can take care of them. They get five ounces of milk a day and, and they can sell the milk to buy school supplies and they're creating entrepreneurial opportunities and the partnership between our federal agency that does support over there, but having it led by a nonprofit here that has the leaders from Kenya that are over there doing it. It was, it was very powerful. So every one of you have that opportunity and they want us. Last night at that meeting, there were Congress people, there were all kinds of folks. There were, there were USDA representatives, NEA, um, Department of Treasury, and they thanked us for coming to Washington, D.C. and helping them create the kind of change. They have access to the agency and the dollars, but they grant that money out to people like you, people like Hustles with Hope. And so to go and be a part of brainstorming, thinking it through, you know, sitting with our Congress people, talking about an exchange program, you know, They've learned over there, they built houses in one day, $400, and the whole village comes together to build it, 100 to 300 people. Can you imagine bringing that over here to the U.S., building community again, that sense of community that we've lost? When I sat there and we, on Pennsylvania Avenue and looked at the rows and rows of streets of people that were homeless gathering in their place to sleep for the night. We better wake up and we better take the lead and listen to what David's telling us about purpose and persistence. So an opportunity, Derek, being in Washington, D.C., I'm just so revved up. <laughs> even more than I always am. <laughs> oh, I'm sure your old uh, your old stopping grounds as well. Nice little reunion out there. Oh, it was so fun. So you guys make sure um, and connect with David. We're connecting. We're bringing us all together. Go to www.thepowerofpurpose.com, and he, he told you the slash mission meetings, okay? So go to thepowerofpurpose.com slash mission meetings. Very, very worth your time. So, Derek, I know we're, we, wanted, we have some, <coughs> some changes going on. We were... We're going to do Purpose Fridays on the first and third Friday because this Friday, first Friday was um, Labor Day weekend. We'll get on track with that. We're going to do guest speaker like David. I don't know, like David. I, I don't think there's anyone like David. But we're going to bring in folks that can guide you, that can give you some guidance on working with the funding and working with your nonprofit. And then we're going to bring it in, in a student. We, we have so many students. We got an email yesterday from one of our mentors, one of our students that we've been working for a few months now connecting. Again, that persistence, uh, connecting with USDA, um, building a pavilion so we could do an equestrian center for veterans with PTSD, and they've been connecting, and they've been persistent, and they've stayed and connected, and and got word yesterday that they did a site visit, and they have awarded um, four hundred thousand dollars for the first seat for the first seat of capital funding. That's pretty powerful. So again, that persistence, Derek. We saw it happen yesterday with our mentor and 
and one of our students that is doing phenomenal um, things for veterans. Because he's a veteran, you know? So do you, do you want to take any questions, Eric? I know we're, we said we're going to start doing it in an hour. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was just the primary point of uh, with, with Q&A on connecting with uh, David. Uh, once again, the powerpurpose.com slash mission meetings. And as well as uh, continue to connect with us. Um, these are, you know, th this is the whole mission for us behind Purpose Fridays is bringing in incredible people uh, talking about purpose, talking about, <clears throat> about forming alliances and coalitions and community to work together to, to do incredible things. So we'll con you know, hopefully you would, we'd like to have you continue joining us on these Purpose Fridays and staying tuned for special guests like this, um, having our students on to showcase the amazing things they're doing and all you know, all, even a lot of fun things down the road as well. So feel free to continue joining us on Fridays. Uh, those email invitations you get, feel free to forward that to your family, your friends, people that are affiliated with your nonprofit. Join us, and we're going to do some great things together and have a lot of fun on our, our purpose uh, happy hours on Fridays. And, and Derek, I'm glad you brought that up. You guys stay connected with us. We are growing. We are getting so connected so that we can bring those resources and, and the open doors, have you go with us. And we go and check out, um, yesterday we met with Chase Magnuson in Washington, D.C., who's one of our lead uh, mentors in the charitable giving of real estate. And, and Derek has an inner circle group of the top ten mentoring students that are working with our software that are doing mailings, the results are astounding. Getting 10, 12 calls um, from potential donors on real estate. So that, that's going on. So, and they're meeting together in Albuquerque on Friday. So we're having the first annual global summit for charitable giving of real estate with our mentoring students. And then more to come in December, we're doing our big annual global summit. So we'll keep you guys informed on that. Um, Derek, it just seems like we've got nonprofit university. We're doing trainings on it every week. The tools and resources for us, like with David, living that life of abundance, it's so important for us to give every tool and resource we can. Because the more you give, the more it comes back. And the more tools, the more we can give you guys, the more you're going to go out and make an impact. So stay connected with us. Um, check out Purpose Into Profits. We've got all kinds of resources for you that we could really help you grow and help you live your passion and bring happiness. I love that when David said, bring happiness to the world. And that's what I experienced, Derek, in Washington, D.C. these last few days, a real sense of ha happiness. You know, watching, being down in the basement of the, the Cannon Building and, and, and eating lunch and all the Congress people were coming in and out and seeing people in wheelchairs all over the place. And, you know, we, that was never there before. And it was just, it was just such joy. It was so, there was so much happiness to sit and watch all that. And then to sit there on Pennsylvania and look at the amount of homeless people that were buying for their spots on the sidewalk to sleep and thinking what we've done and our track record is so successful, where we can go to bring solutions and bring happiness, bring a life of the American dream to people who haven't had that opportunity to work on the, the $19 trillion deficit by creating systems that make sense in the business world. There is so much opportunity, Derek. 
So I just appreciate you guys being spending your happy hour with us. I say congratulations because you've taken that step. Your life is never going to be the same. The joy, the abundance, the purpose-driven life you experience, there's nothing like it. And David is was so important to bring on today, on the day of September 11th, in our anniversary, the National Day of Prayer, to have David come, that first part journey of his life was about, how can I do more, how can I get more, how can I, and the second journey of his life, he's learned, it's about giving, it's about giving and giving and giving, and then it comes back to you tenfold, and the kind of impact you can make, so I look forward to hearing what all of you guys are doing, how we can help support that. And we have an incredible team. I'm so proud of the team and the power of purpose. So we're here. We want to support you in your mission. And as we strive to achieve our mission of launching and empowering at least 10,000 nonprofits for the greater good of this world, you guys are one of them. So we're in this journey together. And with that, Derek, I just want to say, really take a step back today and share gratitude for what we have, for what we've been given. For September 11th, seems so tragic, bringing us to a place of being grateful for what we've been given in life. And I want to leave that with you in this National Day of Prayer, remember to say thank you. You know, it's not always about what we need or what could be better. It's about remembering to be thankful. Wake up every morning. Remember what you're grateful for. Start your day off in gratitude, and it really takes your day a different direction. So, Derek, I'm grateful for you. Um, putting this together for us, for the team around us that makes this happen in all areas. And we'll just surprise everyone week to week with the guests we're bringing in. Um, we've got some great guests lined up for us. Really not guests. I still like the family, friends, because they're either family or friends. Most of them, they become friends, they become family. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Derek, with that, I'm going to go enjoy my grandbabies. Yeah, go ahead and boast. I guess what? It just so happened that uh, being in Washington, D.C., I'm only four hours away from my grandbabies in North Carolina. They do have a mom and dad. I kind of leave them out. I, but... I'm here, drove in last night, and I get to spend the weekend with my grandbabies. So talk about gratitude. Oh, my gosh. They they remind you what life is about. They bring us back when they're asking, why is that tree green? Why is that cloud fluffy? <laughs> the curiosity um, and just the simpleness in life. So put down your cell phones. Get rid of the text. Don't do your email. And enjoy the simple things in life this weekend to be grateful for what we have. Well, well especially today, it's a national day of service. So enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your weekend. Do something uh, great, as all of you always do, uh, to help one another. And we will see you on the next one. Please continue coming back on these Fridays. We have some really special calls for you lined up, so we hope to see you again.